welcome to the March 20th, 2024 Select Board Board of Health to a Commissioner meeting here in the Deerfield Town Hall at 6 p.m. on 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield Mass. This meeting we will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both person, both in person. Okay. Is it one? Mm -hmm. Use the other one. Try the other one. I don't think that one's working. There we go. All right. Here. You can hear me now. Okay. I, I can hear it works. Okay. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record this meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll call this to order at 6.01 p.m. Uh, public comment. Allie, are you here for public comment? Um, I, I can if you want to. I would share um, in case we get to one agenda item. Um, are you here for the, um, special events. the special events? I can tell you, I'm so sorry. I'm going to tell you right now that our intention is to just um, take them under advisement yeah. because um, with the budgets and everything else, we have had zero time to even review them. Yeah. So. Um, okay. If you, yes, that would be good. You want to? Yes. Uh, and you know what? Uh, and you know what? You have to identify yourself for the record. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Allison Maisley. I am the compliance manager for Treehouse Brewing Company. Um, here to just give a very brief update as to where we stand for our plan and event plan for large scale events. Um, we are not quite there yet, but we um, have made some really great strides um, and have coordinated with the head of security for the Big E to sort of get their perspective on larger events and how they run their emergency action plan. Uh, we are in the process of getting some construction done so that our interior occupancy can house all of the um, attendees if we were to have a 5,000 person event, um, hopefully less, but we are uh, currently at 4,220 without any construction. There's a couple of doors that I need to figure out in the meantime. Um, and then we are also still working on, you know, meeting all of the other needs that the um, police, Board of Health building um, that they all have. But we've had a, at least three full meetings and then also several sort of departmental meetings to address each department's needs. Um, and I think, you know, I'm hoping to have a more finalized version for the team by the end of March. So that way we can have a, another meeting to discuss any other further revisions that may need to happen. Perfect. Well, um, I can tell you that we'll push off the, um, you know, the discussion probably for till next meeting. Casey, can you put that on the agenda for next week? We meeting? can. Yeah. 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 Um, our next meeting is um, April 3rd. April 3rd. That works. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, we have a dog hearing that night, right? Yeah. So it'll probably be in this place. It's in a placeholder out. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's why I saw that it was on there. I was driving this way anyway. So I figured I would at least pop in. I think it's really great so far. Um, you know, I think it's going to be really helpful for all of us. So however I can help. Um, well, well, hopefully if we, um, it's, it's just been so extremely busy with the budgets. But I believe that. Yeah. Just the season. <laughs> but um, by April 3rd, we'll have settled out a little bit, I think. So um, yeah. I can check should... in with you guys before then and just see what's yeah. going on. Yeah, you can check with Casey, but chances are that we could probably do it by the 3rd or um, the 17th at the latest. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. That and works. Uh, just a quick question. Have you made any progress on a second egress? So that is our biggest struggle right now. Um, there is a lot of conservation land that surrounds our property. So we are in the process of getting different proposals from civil engineers as to what the best process for that would be. Um, because the, the initial identified egress is like probably honestly the hardest one. Huh. So <laughs> I know. Um, don't know how that was approved back when it was, but, right. uh, you know, we're working through some, a few alternatives and we're going to see what, what the best course of action is. Um, that egress in and of itself can be used for emergency purposes with temporary DOT permits. So at the worst case scenario, we have that access, but, yeah. you know, hopefully we can figure out permanent. some sort of egress. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's the key. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And be, be well, safe. safe travels. Thank you guys. You're yeah. saving me some daylight. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Good, good to see you all. Right. Yeah. Good to see you too. <laughs> bye bye. You. Be safe driving. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. Uh, we have with us a, a Valerie, who we want to our health agent, and who wonderfully works for us, and we want to make sure she gets out of here and driving home safely. So, Valerie. Um, the first thing you have, I think, is on my agenda, or your agenda, is the... Speaking to the mic a little more. <laughs> Sorry. You got it. I'm the mic, mic police. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing on the agenda is the condemnation. The Board of Health needs to ratify the condemnation that I did on 97 Stillwater. Okay. Okay. Th that was called, let me see. Uh, Richard was called to that a few days before I condemned it. Mm -hmm. And he um, agreed uh, it's conditions that are not habitable. So in order to proceed further, I condemned it immediately because nobody can live there. There's nobody there now. Mm -hmm. The doors were boarded up. Okay. So after that, I I posted the the building, and that's where we're at. And now the the board. Ha I think you have pictures. Yes. As well. Mm -hmm. Um. There are pictures for the record. Uh. It's. I guess. I'm. I have. Not, I have exterior photos, right? We don't have an interior photo. I don't no. have interior fo okay. photos because you weren't in it. I wasn't in it, and Fine. and it was um, boarded up. Fine. Uh, yep. I am familiar with the property, so um, if anybody has any questions, you can let I me don't. know uh, as well. I am also familiar with a property from a couple of years ago. Yeah. So the, the next step with this property is I would like to either contact the um, attorney general's office or there's another private receiver uh, firm that will put this property in receivership to bring it up to compliance at no cost to the town. And that's what, what really what we want. Mm -hmm. I gave you information on the receivership program as well. My first step would be to contact the AG's office, although I have a feeling that they may, may be quite swamped. Mm -hmm. I I have done receiverships in the past um, in some of the surrounding towns. Goshen, uh, Williamsburg, there was two in Williamsburg. There was one in Waitley. And they all have been quite successful. So what happens is when you have an owner or an abandoned property, as this is now an abandoned property, um, I would turn it over to the attorney general's office and she would do, she or he, whoever the attorney general is at the time, would do a title search to see if there's any errors, see if there's any lien holders. And then we would go to court and uh, the the judge has a list of approved vetted uh, receivers and they will give it to three or four and let them look at it and to choose one. The attorney general's office would do that, see who the best fit is, and then they would go and they would start to clean it up. But that, it all takes time. It takes mm -hmm. a while. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. And we would go back to court and do monthly progress reports. I wouldn't necessarily have to go. I might go to a couple just to... um let the judge know that I've been, I've been to the site and yes, I agree. Um, 
So this receivership is just to clean up the It's to property. clean up. So at the end of the uh, at the end when everything is compliant and the and the building inspector signs off on it, the work's been done. I sign off it that it's now compliant. Then it goes to auction. And the minimum price is what the receiver has in time and materials and the taxes. The taxes are paid. And so that's the minimum price. If there's nobody that bids on it, then it becomes the receivers. And then if somebody bids on it and it goes over the that amount, then the money goes back to the estate. Um, you know what I'm concerned about is that this is truly a 21E. It's a cleanup site. And how what how do are we going to guarantee that the receiver is going to really clean it up in the way it should be cleaned up. He, he, ha he has to. It, it's He's followed through by the building department. Excuse me. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you say it's a, a brownfield, it's got, you know, oil and whatever. Well, I, we think it might. We think it may have, and that would be up to a receiver to determine, not us. We don't have to determine that. And if if we don't have a receiver and they walk away, well, then we'll research other well, avenues. I, yeah, I was going to say, I have personal knowledge that there is stuff buried there, and I, you know, just want to make sure that it gets cleaned up. Right. Because it does abut, you know, the water district property. Yeah. I understand that, but I think that this would be a good first step and I at least too. allow somebody to go in and explore that. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure the town is not liable at any time because um, I, I feel like this is an open-ended liability, truly. Mm -hmm. So we, no, I we have to be, I'm, I'm so thankful that you are going to shepherd this because it, it really, um, I think we could end up Having a night, it would so be a nightmare. Ready to yes. Make a decision? Yes. Go ahead. Um, I move that we allow um, Valerie Bird to uh, take this property to the Attorney General's office and seek a receivership agreement. Do I have to say um, 97 Stillwater Road, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, uh, state of John Williams Romanowski? Second for discussion. I um do we need to uh affirm the condemnation yeah, we, first before yes. we do this motion? Yeah. Okay, yeah. just I didn't know if we had to do one before the other. Right. Yes. So and, and you all have a copy of I just need one signed copy. Yeah. I don't know if Chris, did Chris give you an extra copy? I think Doesn't... There's one in the signature. Folder. Well, you can have you can have this one. So the first the first step is to condemn. So I'll yes, draw I my have. motion. Okay. Want to make a motion, Trevor? Sure. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, condemnation okay. of uh, 90, okay. 91 and 97, or is it just 97? It's 91 and 97. 91 and 97, Stillwater Road, South Deerfield, Mass, for our Board of Health agent. Second. Um, all those in favor? Yeah. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And then you have a signature there. Oh, great. And then... Um, and then you next. Tim, make that um, motion. So make a motion to um, have the town's health agents. Is this it? Yeah. That was the, uh, yeah, that was the signature for you on the condemnation, okay. right? Is okay. That yes. Right. That's yeah. the condemnation one. Make a motion to have the town's health agent to report this property to the attorney general's office and uh, institute a receivership process. Second. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, okay. So, thank Valerie. You so on that, Valerie. Yes. Thank you so much on that. Um, and like I said, I think what I'm so nervous about is, you know, truly that it gets cleaned up. So, if you can kind of keep an eye on it and whoever that gets picked for the receivership, I will let you know. Yeah. And, just, I don't know, whatever you need to do, I will support because it, 
it truly seems like an open it's, liability to it's me. been a long time coming yeah. yes absolutely more than 20 years that's for sure okay um the other the uh, only other i don't know why i had so many copies of this um the only other thing um that i wanted to talk to you about was just um i increased the um we haven't discussed it yet with finance but for um, next year's revenues, um, I felt like the schools are pretty stable in, in the amount of food trucks that they use. They use them for the events. They use them for the ice rinks, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of stuff. And I, I I didn't add Berkshire Brew any for Berkshire Brew, but I did take the number of Treehouse and I upped it just by 20%. Okay. Do you feel like that is reasonable or do you think... Um, we should uh, have a different number. I no, I, I think that's reasonable because they've expanded their pizza, pizza kitchen. Okay. So now that they're, they're putting out more pizza and speaking with Allie at the meeting, she felt that they would be using food trucks primarily when they had big events. So we may, it may be a nice little balance. Okay. So you, so you feel comfortable? I do. Because I want to make sure it's conservative. I'd rather underestimate our, our revenue than um, yep. I understand. overestimate. Okay. So, so the, so the other thing I wanted to ask was about the budget going forward now. Um, well, w what I think we're going to do um, is at the end of the year, if we've used up all the extra, we usually have extra... Um, amount of money that we roll over to um, free cash from all our, our little expense lines and stuff okay. generally. It doesn't add up to a huge amount, but if um, Brenda's keeping an eye on it and if we use up that little buffer moving forward, because mo all those expense items um, are being paid for under the PHE grant. Okay. So if, um, you know, like your training and- yep you know, the, the fees and stuff. And we had budgeted them for last year. I, I cut them out of the budget because we're trying to, we have a gap. And so I was trying to be as conservative as possible and, and give back as much money um, towards other things. I cut them out of next year's budget. So they're not in next year's budget. Okay. But in this year we had already funded um, that stuff that that's being picked up by the PHE grant. So there should be hours in there. And if we're short, we'll, we'll have to go to the finance committee and just, you know, explain that we have more hours that you're working. That's um, actually what I wanted to bring up because the amount available we have as of the end of February was 15,205. When I figured out what, I was using, because uh, I use 20 hours a week, and Richard has been using seven, which is really not that much. But I'm anticipating that he's going to be doing more Title Fives because the weather is getting better, and hopefully we're not going to have as much rain. So I'm anticipating that we're going to be short about 4,500 by the end of the year. We might be able, in our budget lines, uh, talking with Brenda, we might be able to cover it. Okay. So, but if we don't, that 40, you know, of that 4,500 that we can't cover, I would go to the finance committee okay. and say- and reserve fund transfer. Do okay. a reserve fund transfer request. Okay. Yeah, because, um, you know, obviously you're working, we need you to work the hours that, and you're also generating income when you're working mostly, but um, not all the time, not, not every time, <laughs> as we can see, but- um, you know, the, the hours, uh, reflect what you are actually doing inspections and stuff like that. They don't okay. do generate fees and, and Dick generates fees. So, um, I'm not, I'm not, it, it's, we, we might be, it's close, but it's not anything serious to be worried about. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Great. Thank you. All right, thank thank you. you for all you Thanks, do. Valerie. Really all appreciate right. it, Valerie. Valerie, you. you're doing Thank a fantastic you. job. Yep. Just be very careful driving home. Huh? <laughs> it could be slippery up there in the hill towns.
Oh, oh I yeah. Know. <laughs> it doesn't, it always. Yeah, that one always, last week fooled everyone. Um, thank you, Val. Thank you, Val. Uh, select board um, reports or announcements? Uh, I can, so I, I met today with um, Christopher Dunn and um, Dave Prickett um, at the plant. Uh, Christopher was looking at, um, he, he was trying to get his head around sewer and what we're working on and was uh, curious about um, pursuing uh, feasibility grants uh, to be able to look at more users into the plant. So uh, it was just initial discussion because we've had, um, you know, some entities, tr you know, wanting fr from, say, Waitley, wanting to come into the plant. Uh, so we're looking at, you know, what that would cost. Um, obviously, we wouldn't lay out any money. This would be grant to kind of study what would it take to do that. I think Waitley's looking at some rehabilitation and rebuilding off of uh, the, their exit off 91 and just looking at some ideas on that. So we just kind of had a quick discussion of that. And then um, then we came back and met with um, Bao Lang and um, I want to say Katie, I can't think of her last name, from DOT. Um, so we met on the common today, again, talking about the common, uh, the state is looking at um, safety around bus stops. And so they had on their plan out, out of Boston, they had a, a, a bus stop kind of near Cheslicks, which is no longer there. Uh, it's over across the road. So um, they were looking at, well, you know, how do we make those spots safer and can we paint crosswalks and do that kind of stuff? So we met there with our plan for the common and their plan and said, how do we how do we get this to work? And what, you know, what will the state do? What what do we have to do to try and nail down these crosswalks? And then I talked to them about the Leary lot work we're doing and um, what I, I saw the plans today when I came back and talked to Chief, because one thought we had was to slow down that traffic coming around park is to pull up to a 90 degree and then turn right. So you can't just zip through in front of um, Graves. Yeah, Graves and the other. Um, who's the detailer there? I can't think of the Josh. Josh yeah. is place um you know if he's backing out cars are just flying through there and there's no delineation from sidewalk to road our thought was to kind of and dot wants to come up block that off and have a 90 degree stop there so that then you could turn right so people can't just zip through town at 40 miles an hour they would come take a right hand turn so they're evaluating through there. Yes, yeah. they would definitely make sure you they could need do a to be able to there. get a tractor trailer. Through Explained there. all of that. So and is that before and, and you really actually... a tractor trailer should come off the of one sixteen and come straight through the intersection? But they, you it know, can't make the down. turn because they have that island there. Well, they should remove the island. Well, that's something that DOT needs mm -hmm. to know. Yeah, because actually Denise and I have been talking about that for years. Yeah. So there's um, so there's work to be done, but they're evaluating that area and how do we do that and you know, make sure you can still. So the, that. are you talking about the, the turn before you get to the four-way intersection at North Main and Elm? Uh, so you would, um, let's see, so you, you would come down Sugarloaf Street and instead of, well, you would still go through Park, right? but instead of uh, going straight on to North Main, you would kind of pull up kind of facing the Leary lot, then turn right and, and keep going. So you'd have to make a stop. You couldn't just zip through Park on the North Main. You'd come uh, Park Street, stop facing the Leary lot, and then turn right or turn left if you want, but mm -hmm. generally turn right to right. head north. So it would slow that traffic from just shooting through. They would have to make a stop there. Um, and then that, that might significantly reduce the traffic as well. They because... may say, Oh, I don't want to deal with that. I'll stay on the bypass. Yeah. You know, you know, it kind of, you know, we don't want to reduce traffic. From coming to the center of town, but if they're just zipping through and they're they care zipping to stop, through, I know, then and, and stay on the main road. They're speeding up, you know, through our school zones. And they everything. are, yeah. And it was good because they were there when Frontier let out, and they're like, "Oh my God, what is all this? Why is there traffic backed up way down the road?" So it's every day, two thirty, three o'clock. This is what happens every day in town. They're like, "Wow." So it's all the kids, you know, and then they're all zipping one way or the other to try and avert the traffic, cut through this parking lot. 
the cut through Conway. It's good, good so timing on your part. Whoever. It was good timing on Christopher's part. So, um, so we talked about that. They said they're going to take it back. And then what I wanted to do, though, when I came back and talked to Chief about that stop, he was in favor of that. He said, anything you can do to slow down that traffic through there. Um, but I, I looked at the new plan that Berkshire Design did, and their crosswalk plan does not match what he drew here. So what I wanted Jeff to do, if we can get a message to Jeff, if Chris, you're watching Chris this later, on, he's I not know, here today. If he watches this meeting later, I want him to have have Jeff Squire match up this plan with the Weary Lot plan because he has the crosswalk in a different spot. Oh and my so God. I just that's what I just want him to be together and planned out fully. Oh yes. And that may change again when. DOT comes back and says, we'll do this or we won't do this or that kind of thing. But well, So I just need you to understand that if we slow this project down, our be, our ability to use our funds could be eliminated because fine. we have to get. I, what I'm saying, cover. what I'm saying, Casey, is that you cannot design this Leary Lock crosswalk that doesn't line up with the town common that you've already spent money engineering. So they need to align. That's that's commentary that we need to hear. But what you need to understand is if it slows the project down, it puts the it project can't. in jeopardy. He already has this drawn and he has the other one drawn. I'm saying line up the crosswalks. OK, that's all I'm saying. It's not that difficult. His plan for crossing across the Conway was not anywhere near the design. What he already drew on this one. So I just want them to align is all. Yeah. So I don't know what the difficulty is there. It just, they, the he didn't look at both. So I just want him to look at both and line them up. It's not a huge deal. Shouldn't slow up anything. Well, I'm, I'm not Jeff, so I don't know that. I just want you to be aware that slowing things down slows the project. It yep. shouldn't slow it down. It can't. It can't slow it down. It just needs to well, align. The, does, has Chris Nolan got the, got the contract for the money for the Leary lot? Pardon? Has, has, has the documentation from the federal no, grant. No, that's why I'm saying any changes we make right. slow down the ability for us to send out bid documents, get the bid back, and get it started in this construction season, Trevor. Right. Well, he's got the crosswalk I know that going he's right got between there, the but I don't bar. know how it aligns with what's already there. And I'm not arguing that we shouldn't do it. All yep. I'm saying is the, the more you put on, the slower it gets. He just, the other he thing is line it. If, the, the, key, the key thing I understood was that we do not have the federal government's contract yet. We don't. And that's the thing that's slowing things down in my mind. Um, and I don't see why we can't get that. Once that's signed, even if the, the sidewalks don't align right now, make them align later. Mm -hmm. I mean, just well, we don't let it slip. Well, and we don't have a contract, but I will say we did have a meeting. Um, I was there for part of it the other day um, to get a, a, it was a meeting about the CFI grant. So what I would suggest you do, Trevor, is just shoot Chris a quick email. Chris Dunn's um, going to send this to him and say these need to align because yeah, there was all this infrastructure it. on I this road. The work is on Jeff's part. That's just, why I'm saying. Well, he should have already had spot. it. Yeah, well, he's he got it in it. a different project, but I don't know what the design looks like right now that might have an, be impacted by what you're asking. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think it's the wrong thing to do. I just yeah, and it I may have no no net started. impact, you know. Right. It should have no no net effect. It just needs to go where it's yeah. going to line up. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other announcements? I just um, I want to say that uh, next week, March twenty eighth at one p.m. Um, Nick Miller from Field Geology will be walking along um, Bloody Brook, the length of Bloody Brook. He is a fluvio geomorphologist. I was going to cue that word. Yes, fluvio geomorphologist. Everybody at home, take a drink. I yeah. know. It's a long um, word. It means he studies the movement of the of the rivers, and um, we're going to get some information. Part of the little grant that we have is he's going to look at the river for uh, Bloody Brook for us. He's going to speak to and write, have a written report for the MVP committee, as well as a meeting, um, two meetings, one with the select board as well, to talk about what he's observed and what we can do to increase capacity and um, potential for flood mitigation projects. 
Um, we already know from the work that was done by the senior housing group that there is a choke point at the um, culvert here that goes over to the elementary school. Mm -hmm. And we just got notice that there's a new opportunity for MVP um, culvert replacement. Uh, and before we've had caps, um, a very limited amount of money, you know, usually under a million, but right now it's um, two to 3 million. So that's a kind of ex uh, exciting thing that whatever that culvert is gonna do, we that means we could probably put an open bottom culvert in there and have a much more um, bigger flow, flow mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But he will recommend that. So I, I just want people to be aware that when you see um, a few people, Chris Dunn and Christopher Nolan probably will walk with um, Nick up and down the brook. And um, Megan Zuzinski from the Conservation District will probably walk her along too because we have potential for other little grants that will help us with um, stabilization uh, and training along the brook, like the we still have the grant to do the training of the highway crew mm -hmm. on invasives. That's what Nick will also evaluate, which, you know, obviously invasives like not weed we get rid of. But there are other things that hopefully he can identify that the highway crew can get rid of. We have the grant to plant a buffer that will of native plants that will mitigate flooding as well as be a pollinator corridor through town. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and we also have um, tomorrow night is the senior housing open house. It's just to look at some of the early, early concepts of, of senior housing and we'll hope people will come so they Where's can that? Uh, yeah. right here. here. Yep. What at time? 630. Okay. Um, so I hope people will come. And um, that's about all. Oh, and for Board of Health announcements, if if there's no other announcements, um, the Narcan training is happening next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, we're giving out Narcan. We're giving out how to uh, teaching you how to use it. You can meet our new nurse. We just hired a new nurse, um, Anne Mastro Taro. I'm murdering her name uh, for 15 hours a week. She's going to work with Cindy Majewski um, and she, we are splitting her with Sunderland. She'll have 15 hours in Sunderland and 15 hours here. Uh, this is under the PHE grant. So this is really, really exciting where we now have access to five public health nurses um, under the grant. So we have are able to do vaccine management if we want to uh, set up an uh, emergency dispensing site, all kinds of exciting things. Um, and we're working with the Foothills PHE group, which is um, Waitley, Williamsburg, Goshen. We're going to be um, incorporating them in our new EDS group. So this expands some of the um, our ability to handle um, vaccine and potential other issues. So that's exciting. Um, it's also tick season. Please watch out for ticks. And just as a reminder, the town does subsidize tick testing. We use the data of what is if, if the ticks are infected or not. So it's, it's really great to have the ticks tested, but also it's a peace of mind for you to know that you should be on antibiotics or not. Um, or wouldn't talk with your primary doctor if there is a disease load detected. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to? Oh, yeah. Um, select board, not board of health. Oh, no, that's um, fine. Yeah. I didn't know when you wanted to talk about 1821, but might as well do it now. Oh, we um, have we have that down here on the agenda. Is it a placeholder? Uh, is it? It's the third, okay. third item. Very good. I'll wait. Okay. Um, otherwise, moving on. Road damage. Updates. Is Kevin coming on? Do you know? Were you no, he, he's he's got tied up with something. Because okay. um, he said he was going to try this morning. Yeah, he okay. has. Um, I, I spoke to him on the phone. He does. Um, he's gathering up the numbers for the paving part of Hawks Road or the, the milling up the hill, which is probably 12,500 roughly. Um, 
and then that was like the grinding to have yeah. to go up the road um rough numbers maybe 30,000 if he paves to where it stops 60 uh 64 if we go all the way up to just before the levels off at the swamp um you know that's just a binder um well he's is he going to come and talk to us before he does this ha yeah has to okay yeah for I, sure can you just make sure he does casey all right Kevin well, comes and talks to us before he goes and hires a because yeah. we need to decide how far up we're going to go. Fox yeah, yeah, and what we're going to do. So I think the majority of the space would be a binder. I, I mean, I assume up the hill would be paved, but then once it gets to the top, it would probably be a binder instead of um, full paving. Yeah. So, I, I, what I, he I, was saying to me today was that um, one of the things he's looking at is putting a base coat um, and then uh applying oil and stone because he said if you repave it with a finished coat it very can be very slippery. dangerous yeah and slippery so um but uh, yeah definitely needs to come to us with a budget and a plan yeah um yeah okay thanks and uh, you know is this Partly is this just regular road maintenance and partly it's well he he was gonna he was talking about the paving part using chapter ninety, but the grinding part was gonna be emergency road repair money. Okay. Yeah, because I, I as we get closer to the money, the the limit of what we said we were gonna spend, yeah, we're getting less and less information about what we're spending. Right. And right. we need I, to have an update. I, of, I, I do, you know. Yeah, I agree with you completely. I want um, to know exactly what we're spending. What I would exactly like to do, doing, Casey, is done. put it on the agenda um, for a total for April 3rd to get a total. Hold on. And I then type uh, all this stuff up. <laughs> while you manage the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and um, then also, if we need a special, I, I, I feel like we have to have a special meeting to decide how we're going to, with Brenda, how we're going to. I think you should discuss that at a finance committee meeting. Yeah, and I've, I can't tell if that's a hand up for Julie or if it's oh, uh, Julie, no, that's, that's, that's your little no. you're trying <laughs> that's this. drag Sorry. Her around. I know. It's no, like... it's it's the little drag and drop hand. That's me. Yeah. Um. Well, Casey, I I I feel like we need to, as a select board, decide what we we don't even have a total. So I would like to have an informational meeting with the select board and Brenda first, and and if the finance committee wants to come, that's fine, but. I want a meeting, separate meeting that we talk about money and and how we're going to spend it. Because, I mean, the ARPA money has to be under contract by December of um, this, year. this year. Yeah, We have two years to spend it, but it has to be under contract. So if we're going to, I need to, we need to know, we got a ton of ARPA money that we've been, you know, saving for the Leary lot mm -hmm. and the 1888 building. But if we can't use the ARPA money in time of that December date, we need to be able to use that towards, you know, we could use it towards the emergency repairs mm -hmm. and then backfill with other money. But we need to have we need to have some discussion of how we're going to use our money. And then we can go to the finance committee and say, well, this is what our proposal is. Julie, does that sound reasonable to you or do you want um, I mean, I, I don't care if you're in on the meeting that we have set up with Brenda. Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, I'd be interested just because I'm interested, but I don't think it needs to be part of the finance committee meetings going up to town meeting going through the budget. Yeah, I, I, I we need to figure, just figure out because um, what I worry about is that we need to have that ARPA money absolutely committed with a to, contract. With a contract at least by by December, because we don't want to lose. I mean, we're not going to be giving back a dime. Uh, we have plenty of ways to spend it. So, um, but I want to make sure it's in the mix because if if we can't use it for what we had planned on, um, then we have to figure out something else. So, does that make sense, Casey? So, we'll what date do you want to have? Do you want to have that discussion on the third? Well, we could just. Is the there... only thing I need to check is we did uh, postpone the um, 
dog hearing mm-hmm. to an April meeting, and I thought it was the third. Yeah, and that was a six fifteen start. I'm, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a. So yeah. too. if you want to discuss that, you yeah. should. We should think about. Well, what we could do is we could if is everybody available on April second in the evening of April second, or you have your. Well, uh, I I still want to add more meetings. We everybody's got so many meetings. Well, we have to have can a separate. A, this has to be a separate meeting to Trevor. Right? Can can we do it on Monday when we're already meeting? You know, before the that's, that's what Julie said she didn't want to. Do. Yeah, no, Julie. Uh, she's got her own business that she's trying to get done. Um, no, I'm, I'm saying before her meeting. April first, they meet at five o'clock, Trevor. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, and planning um, board is right after that, so we have to end at six thirty on the first. What about five o'clock on on the when third? I just don't want to meet meeting after night after night yeah. after night. Well, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's driving it's me it's crazy. A it's a lot for all of us. I, I know so, so it's much. Hard, it's hard to go out five days a week, and I'm I, you know my day job is just consuming me at the moment, so it's really right. well. Was my I can we I can meet early, early on third. The, I can meet early on the third. How about you, Tim? Is Brenda in on Wednesdays? She is, but she's in later. She comes in later. So this that's five thirty. We're talking about five. No, five. no, four thirty or five. Four, on April third, third, we've got a select board meeting at six, right? Yeah. Right. Yes, the and regular meeting to come in at four thirty or five, something like that, just to get that business just done. So if you we want. got to talk about how we want to. Um, are, are you talking about ARPA? Are you talking about road repairs? Road well, repairs. How are we going to pay for the emergency road repairs? So what combination of funding are we right. are we going to come up with to recommend? And or do we of- do something next week? Because April 3rd is also the day I have a training session. Okay. Um, yeah. That I have to be all day at. I don't know. They usually end by 4.30. Um well, But lately, um, I don't think Chris can cover meetings on Wednesdays anymore. I do not have. We have five meet, uh, five nights next week, so um, so if it's got to be the third, um, no, no, no. I mean, we can. I can do in the afternoon. The, well, next Wednesday, the Skems meeting isn't till six. So Tim, Tim, and I are going to is that. It six o'clock. Yeah, I thought it was six. What, what about you, Trevor? What, what, do you, you what are you talking about? What date? Next, next Wednesday, Wednesday the twenty seventh. I thought it was six thirty. Let me look. They have a scams meeting. I'm open if you need. Well, how about do you want to meet at four thirty on the twenty seventh, and then Tim and I can leave for the six o'clock scams meeting? Yeah, five. You said. No, I think I I don't think an hour is going to be enough. I think we need an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, so we could do four thirty on the twenty seventh. Um, because we have finance and the three fiftieth on the tw- on Monday, Narcan trainings on Tuesday, Skims is Wednesday, but we could do earlier Thursday. I got senior housing, and I'm already going to be here with Nick. So, um, okay. okay. Can you do that or can't you? Yep. I mean, I know it's a no, I know it's I, a lift. Trevor. It's in. It's in. Okay. Four thirty on the twenty seventh here at the town hall. And we'll and we'll meet with Brenda. Can you set it up with Brenda? Yeah. Okay. And that way we'll have a recommendation for the next week. Do you want to do it hybrid or remote? Just uh hybrid just in case. Hybrid. Yeah, yeah, just in case, I guess. But we'll we'll meet with Brenda here. Okay. Who's we meeting with Brenda? The select board meeting with Brenda. Oh, so hybrid for other people. Just, yeah, we'll yeah, publish it as case, hybrid, but other yeah, people Julie can come on remotely. In, in case Julie wants to be. Ready. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Then next, uh, next time on the agenda is the approval and signatures for taking agreement um, for the St. James property. This is the, you know, you have to, um, anything that the town takes, they have to take, have a friendly taking. So it's an eminent domain taking that yep. has been approved by the uh, current owner. So the board needs to approve 
they need to approve the document and sign it. Okay. Um, I'll take a motion. We don't have any minutes, right? What? We don't have any minutes to approve. In other words, uh, I, oh, are we I, now into discussion items because we don't have any minutes? Yes, we skipped okay. over the minute oh, and we you. went to the road damage estimates and we're now on the St. James property. Sorry, Dave. No, that's okay. I just am trying to keep track of things because I can never tell where the heck we are in these meetings. Well, I'm going to I'm going to actually yeah. suggest when I'm the chair to, to have a screen up there that has the document that we're currently talking about in this meeting is here. Because then I can keep track of stuff. I, I I always get lost at least one one time during these meetings. Okay. All right. So I will take a motion to approve the taking by imminent domain of the St. James property. I'll make a motion to approve the friendly eminent domain proceeding for the um, St. James property. Is that 85 North Main Street? I believe. Yes. Second that motion. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? MLG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is the 1821 building. Um, we signed, we voted the award on Monday, but um, because it was a combined meeting, I wanted to make sure that we discussed it um, further tonight um, and also that Trevor wasn't there. Although there's a little discussion that you need to fix the relish. Um, so Tim, this is your opportunity. Tim has been doing an amazing job over in the kitchen and the entryway of the church. Well, no, so... Um... About this, I um, mean, we we did go through and approve um, at the uh, Monday meeting, but um, <clears throat> I think we have a plan that allows us to pay for this with already yes. adopted money and uh, and any mon money that uh, we have the funding sources to sign yeah. the contract. So we received two bids: one from Synaxo LLC and one from Yankee Tower. Right. Um, we had a baseline bid from Synaxo at. $235,832 with an alternate a add-on of 37702 and the alt was to was for the footings to support the balcony. Yeah. Um, so the total for that, if it was accepted, both baseline and the add-on was $273,534. The second bid we received, the baseline was $255,000 even with the alternate A1 at $96,000. And that reached a total of $351,000. So I had a conversation with John Watney and he recommended that we go with Synaxo. We just needed the board to consider A, you know, the funding sources, because this came in a little bit higher than we were expecting. And making, I went through and made sure we had the funding that we needed to do this. Because I do think it's important that if we can afford to do the adult, that we do that. So I recommended that to the board. I, I the reason why I supported the additional um, add-on is because this is, you know, the stabilization of the balcony, and it also reduces the stress on the roof, and um, you know, the pressure on the roof. So yeah, because that one truss is crushed, so yeah. it's affecting all the both sides of the roof. Yeah. And, um... Can we, could I just, could somebody just give me a quick lowdown? Cause I have not been involved with this. So uh, this is so what this they was call the relish repair. Of money and I was trying to figure out. Well, I sent, I sent you, uh, so Monday when we talked about it, Trevor, yeah. I called you about it. Um, I sent you the 1821 building emergency repairs project manual. Yeah. Essentially what it's asking for the baseline bid is to repair the trust that's crushed. Yeah. Um, on the one section of the roof. Okay. That. And that that relish, they call it relish, mm -hmm. a relish repair. Relish but that relish. truss that's the, the connecting point is crushed. The weight of the balcony and several other factors are pulling inside on the truss. The room. Yep. It's pulling down on the truss. So inside yeah. the room, that balcony is pulling on two sections of the trusses. The one side is crushed. Yeah. The other side is heavily affected. So the okay. whole roof is affected. Yeah. Um and that's affecting the stability of the steeple is that right or it not? is affecting it not it, the main pieces fix the, the trusses so that you can fix so the roof is stable and and then so that that means replacing or repairing that 
to trust, trust them. Who trusts themselves? And so then, yeah, um, I met when I met with John Watney over there the before he finished this latest design repair. There is there's two cords. Yeah, relish is here. Yeah, it's like a mortise and tenon sure. that's rotted. Okay, and there's a there, then there's a beam that goes across the top where the those things sit. Mm -hmm. That's all rotted. Okay, um, so they have to cut out um, sections of wood on either side of the the relish damage joint. Right, and they have to pull back in the um, the the relic the the, yeah. the cords on the other side because right because this has been slipping that all the support things are loosening right and um and then they need to put a metal plate on the outside to tie everything together then reinstall the siding etc yeah. so yeah. um i think it got a little more damage i think originally well, what weren't we talking like 100 50 perhaps or 125 right. 150 yeah 000. it was somewhere between 100 and 150 so, but yeah, the bit but, came but in it was really underestimated the amount of damage that's. Uh, so we don't know how much additional damage has happened, but it's definitely more damage than what we originally started out with. So my concerns are, um, that's rotted because water's coming in. Are we addressing the roof? Oh yeah, I mean the repair has to address happen first, yeah. and then we. Yeah, you have to repair. You have to do the repair first. Yeah, because um, the roof is not that great a shape either. It's. Single. Yeah, I mean, um, I know we're not doing it in this, but I'm so and then the other thing, you know, that's vinyl sided. And my worry is like, if we ever take off that, I, I worry about the metal plate on the outside kind of just getting hidden by vinyl siding. And do we think, um, say we at some time, peel the vinyl siding off and try and restore it back to what it is, is that metal plate? Is there a way to? Yeah, I mean, I think they'll kind of thing? be. The only thing that I can suggest is that, uh, you know, we contact John Watney and say we need to be able to, in a future or in a future renovation of the exterior of the building, be able to put on, you know, clabbered. Right. It you is, know. It's going to be right because yeah. the clabber is on there now and they might have some insulation and then that vinyl went over it, the vinyl siding. And I, event, if we're going to keep this building, I'd love to see it come back to original, you know, put yeah. original windows in and get get rid of the siding and put the piece in. You know, yeah, we, but we, we probably put, put composite clapboards on. Yeah, like yeah, a hardy. Yeah, or, yeah hardy yeah. board. Hardy or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, diamond coat stuff. Is, yeah, yeah, we um, wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't, and, and now you should be able to work around the metal. Plate. Well, that's why I wanted to make yeah. sure it wasn't yeah. just this big metal chunk sitting on the side mm -hmm. of the building. So I just yeah. didn't know what that well, detail it, looked like. Yeah, I would. I, I haven't looked at that uh, plan for what he designed, but is it in the? Is it in the? I don't. I don't. I don't. Project I, manual has the information. Has all that. This design. is interior work. Um, yeah. So I sent you the project actually, manual. You said the metal plate's outside, right? The. I don't know where the metal plate is. I'm. That's that was my only concern was what it what it really looked like. But I'll look through that. That's fine. I mean, yeah, we're going to go ahead. We need manual. to secure the building. I get We've that. We've got to secure the roof. That's we already we already voted it. So what I would like you to do is reaffirm the vote. Yeah. Yeah. So I make a motion to reaffirm the vote. To I'll Lewis. second the motion. Uh, is there any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor. MLGI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, no, that's fine. Well, the reason, no. No, no more talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, next, item. <laughs> next item. They don't want me to talk, Carolyn. It's all good. And me. They don't want me no, to say. But I was worried about, um, you know, Easter week, and I wanted to make sure that the, there was mobilization as fast as possible because so one it is thing very I, much damaged. Could you think about the board, I mean, approving the contract subject to review of the vendor and council um, and to have the board sign at their convenience so we can... Or the so the chair of the select board sign at their convenience. I'll make that motion. Just so we can move I'll this along. I'll second that motion. Uh, all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank okay. you. Now we can move it faster. I really appreciate it. We just, you know, we want to get them mobilized as much as, as soon as possible, Casey. I'm really sorry. No, it's just, that's fine. Um. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the heat grant. And this is to, um, again, this would be to authorize me to sign. Um, and, but Tim, could you just talk about it a little bit? Because um, people need to know, remember that what this is for. 
Right. And so you have a um, good. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, in the fall, we applied for um, a grant from called the Kickstart Mass grant that was uh, offered by a nonprofit known as Heat. Um, it's the Home Energy Efficiency Team, and um, this was to do a feasibility study of um, putting a geothermal exchange field somewhere in the center of town. Um, what we originally applied for was an actual test well in, in the town campus. Um, what the uh, heat wants us to do is to, um, using consultants, uh, try to assess the interest of the community uh, in potentially tying into geothermal, um, including Berkshire Brewing Company, which is uh, they consider to be a good candidate for um, geothermal because they can accept heat and give off cooling and, and uh, they would be a good balancing mechanism for how this system works. Uh, there's a $50,000 grant. Uh, there's a pretty rigid timeline, um, which Casey can talk to you about uh, in the contract. There's three or four reporting periods between now and yes. September. Um, I've asked Christopher Dunn uh, to, well, he's the planner to- He's leading it. Try to try to coordinate all of this stuff and to, to the extent possible, um, work with consultants that he is familiar with so that we can- minimize the load on staff while also getting information for a uh, future um, potential federal or state grant to move some or all of the, the campus area into a geothermal um, system. And uh, there was a possibility that in my mind that we wouldn't accept this grant simply because if we had to do all this work, it's a very compressed timeline and it would swamp people. So um, I think that has been resolved that we would use consultants wherever possible and uh, who are familiar with HEAT's process. So anything else, any questions? Is there um, is there a match? Yeah, is there a match? There's no match. That's okay. And also um, HEAT is trying to work with large utilities, or at least they want to... They want to think about the large utilities like Berkshire Gas, um, which has infrastructure in the ground. And one of the possible models that would not have large upfront costs for the public sector would be to work with a company like Eversource or Berkshire Gas that would install infrastructure and then have a similar um, business model than Instead of getting gas delivered to your house, you're going to get heating and cooling delivered to your house from an underground geothermal system. Um, so part of this process is to have community engagement, talk to people on North Main Street, talk to people, businesses on Elm Street, um, or uh, talk, to, talk to anybody in town actually uh, doesn't have to mean that the geothermal campus would, uh, geothermal field would be put in the campus area, although that seems to me the most logical place to do it since it's central. Um, but this this will explore uh, and give us a roadmap to tell us what are, what are the geological conditions under South Deerfield uh, and what are the, you know, the, what are the abilities of the ground um, heat sink to provide um, <clears throat> heating and cooling for uh, large, air, large numbers of homes and businesses and municipal buildings. Right. Is it, do we have, do we have uh, land that, that's good for this? Right. And, right. and the, the really encouraging thing is that, as I mentioned previously, um, I didn't know this until recently, but Eagle Brook has at least 70 wells currently and they're heating and cooling a lot of their um their faculty housing, um, yeah. student dorms, and the brand new school buildings that were built relatively yeah. recently. And they're going to put in another 35 wells um, when they do their new uh, dining hall. Yeah. Uh, IDA, I assume, has these, these systems available too. So 
um, the reports that Heat has referenced in uh, don't really mention any of that. So we have a local resource even closer than UMass right. or um, you know Amherst College to draw from. Yeah. And what it, what this will do at the end of the day is give us a, a fairly robust um, roadmap for if we want to go down this path, and and it would provide us also with. Uh, documentation that if we went to the federal government or the state government to look for grants to do the actual installation, we would have a plan. Um, so we had applied for a grant before, right? And and that fell through just based on, on the side. Yeah, know. basically that we applied for a federal program that was very promising, but they only gave out 10 um, awards yep. for the whole United States. Right. So um we weren't one of the lucky recipients, but yeah. uh, we. But it wasn't because oh hey you this prop this property doesn't doesn't support geothermal. Wasn't no, it? no, and and okay. the proximity with Eagle Brook. I mean, we're so close that right. It's it's pretty clear that yeah you know other than you know being in a um, two hundred foot setback zone right, um, but these wells. If you build a big field, apparently, Eaglebrook says it's like six thousand a well. They drill four hundred foot well yep. into bedrock, right, and then they fill it with. Um, when when I was looking in when we were applying for that federal grant, I did a lot of research, and um, Williston has been having wells for several years, and they've um, they're a heating and cooling bill. You know, because kids leave windows oh, open sure. and all the kinds of stuff. Um, they, it, they, he can't. The um, facilities manager down there couldn't say enough about it and how okay. it's reduced their operating costs tremendously. Great. And, and um, it, he loves it. And they are just putting in wells, even though they are not um, yeah. going to hook them up because they want them ready to be hooked up when, when they, they when they need them so, and um, so, this, so it's really positive trevor so this grant is to kind of get that feasibility mm -hmm. does does our property work for it what could we hook into is that yeah if it's a good site right. um you know site. uh and there's no and, outlay of cash and no outlay of cash and and um i think the first part of this you get twenty five thousand, and then you get a second second distribution of twenty five. yeah there's some communities who only got ten thousand, and um, uh, we're the only one in Western Massachusetts, and we we were awarded at a higher level. Right. Okay. So now we have to rely on Christopher Dunn to uh, yeah to keep the horses it. all you know. He's a rock star. Get it done. Yeah. So. Okay. That's good. Great. Okay. So um, I will take a motion to have um, the chair sign this. Make that motion. Second the motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, budgets and capital requests. Cool. Here I go. Okay. So you're going to see two budget changes. One is the treasurer collector salaries and the other is the concert, contracted services. The requested change to the treasury collector's salaries would be to reduce one employee's hours from 40 hours to 35 for the fiscal year 25. Um, and the net effect would be a $5,798 reduction if it was approved by the select board. Um, and so that's the, that's the consideration. What does the board want to do? We have been experiencing this, and we're still going through it, this decoupling of the mm -hmm. town clerk treasure collector position from one position to two, essentially. Yeah. And so we separated town clerk, and we've sort of dealt with the town clerk department. Um, we separated treasure collector into one office, and it may be that the work can be accomplished with this reduction in one employee's hour. So I just am putting that before the board for your consideration because we do have a budget meeting on Monday. And if the board wanted to make that change, we need to be prepared to give that back to Brenda to send to them. 
Um, I'll make a motion to approve the change. A second for discussion. Uh, yeah, for discussion. So go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Trevor. No, I, 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 I talked to Brenda a bit about this today, and I, I think so. My concern is it's um, until everything settles out, it's always hard to really um, give up the funding to make sure that that's that that office is funded correctly, but. Um, I've been assured that like this, this really makes sense. And I, and I think, um, it may be a long-term thing, you know, at some point we may have to go back and say, Hey, look, we, we do need the more time, but I, I, I don't think, um, the only place. So I worry about, well, it's not in this budget. So I, I, I feel like this makes sense and I would move forward with this. I'm concerned about accounting and, um, you know, we need a succession plan event. You know, it's, it's a while down the road, but not that far down the road. And um, and she she really needs an assistant in there. And I think that's in the budget right now. So talking to her today, that's still in there. But it is. Um, so, yeah, I'm good with this. I'm I'm OK. Always nervous. So when you're saying assistant, are you talking about Brenda? Yeah, yeah. I was so, talking about yes. Brenda, yeah. not, okay. not this budget. Right. But no, yeah. we have a succession. plan. We've had several right. succession plan discussions, she yeah. and I. And we need to she's got some goals and it's in her budget. And yeah. what we'll what we'll do is we will explain that. Yeah. But we have to start succession planning for the retirements that we're going to see because we're ahead we've got, got a bunch. ahead of us yeah we've got kevin and, and, yeah. and we could potentially see another one so we need yep. to be prepared to deal with that and so she and i she's been at her accounting conference so we haven't had a chance to talk yep. about it but it is a key piece of dealing with the financial work for the town is where do we best put our resources knowing that if you have a retirement for a particular type of position, like the accounting position, yeah. and I'm not discounting anybody else, but right. that is a but, very difficult position to fill. Right. It's there are not a lot of town accountants out there. She was laughed at at the conference this week. Like, hey, you know, anybody want to, you know, plan for taking everyone laughs. Like, no, no, you can't find anybody. You cannot find you anybody. Find so anybody. she and, and I have been working person. on this for several months. And she brought it to me because she was concerned. So from the perspective of a net effect on the budget, you're right. We're not necessarily at the point where you're asking everybody to cut budgets. What you're seeing is a proposal in the treasure collector salaries budget to make a financial change mm -hmm. that could benefit the town. Yeah. It is up to the board whether they want to endorse it or no, not. No, I, I, I agree. I do agree with it. And I think that uh, Sarah knows what she needs. And it, and if she right. feels like she can do that with the hour she has, then um, and it frees her up a little bit, you know, uh, then that's great. I'm okay so, with it. Yeah. I mean, my thought is... Um, it had been suggested to leave it the way it is. That's one option, yeah. or to accept the you know Sarah's uh, offer. Yeah. Um, and it seems to me that my my personal opinion is we should accept the offer, yeah. but put a note in that in the accounting software that says, you know, this was done for you know specific consideration and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so if people in the future ask a question, well, why did it go down to 35? Right. Well, it, it was a temporary thing. And it was and, decoupling of the, right. of the, the positions. We're, we're still not through all the decoupling. Right. Right. There, that is yep. a big part of this is trying to, to navigate what's needed. What's the future. And right. it, it seems and like it's been long enough that she, she feels comfortable with this change. There, right. there is a comfort level now that she, we've been through a good portion of that. Yeah. And right. I will say there were periods of time where the work done in that department was done by one person mm -hmm. struggling mightily. Yeah. Um, and so now that things have calmed down and they're better staffed, right. it's much easier for the planning yeah. pieces and the execution to happen. Right. And I think that it's better to take them take the the benefit of this yep. financial change. Um, ch change rather than let it go into free cash next year. Right. We don't need yep. free cash next year. We need we need, need money help now. now. Help now. Yeah, ag agreed. Yeah, we have okay. a lot of work to do for next so year. So are we ready to vote then? Yep. All those in favor? Tim LG, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. okay. Thank you. The second one, and this can, there's a twofold thing here. So at the Capitol meeting this past Monday, the 18th, um, Carolyn and the rest of the Capitol committee were discussing this. We have an opportunity for, I believe it's an MVP grant, to do work 
on the Bloody Brook culvert. It's a $25,000 cost. Um, Christopher Dunn had prepared a project request right before the, excuse me, right before the meeting because I didn't have any of the background. And so Carolyn explained it. Um, so we had this going on and go ahead and fill everybody in Carolyn, because well, it's, you have that application there. What, what happened is, um, we got notice, um, Thursday late in the afternoon. So this is really Friday information, uh, that the MVP, um, got additional funding from the governor to open up uh, another round of, of funding, but up to 3 million. And, um, it was going to be used to, um, talk about what people want to, you know, what they need to do to spend on their, this basically the MBVP 2, 2.0 project that we're working on, which is campus here and our vulnerable population along the Bloody Brook, because again, the Bloody Brook is a major issue here for flooding. Um, and it's our most vulnerable population that we've identified. And, and we're gearing our engagement plan. We're gearing our um, mitigation plan and everything else to document how much water we're supposed to get twice as much water in the next few years because of climate change and these intense events, how we're going to handle that water. And so here's an opportunity. Um, it is the, it's due on April 24th. And so this was kind of a anticipated next year project, but we're going to bump it up to this year, potentially, if we can get it funded. Um, and what we need is to do some engineering. Uh, the actual MVP match will become from our MVP. We has a, have to vote to recommend to the select board that we have take our 2.0 money and use it towards this um, project. And so the actual match to this would be covered by um, our MVP 2.0 that we already have in hand, um, but you still have to have some engineering uh, to, to work on this. And, and with this $3 million cap, um, we are able to do this culvert out here, which is really fantastic. So, so uh, that came up and it was followed yeah. by a conversation. So you have the project request, take a look at it. Um, I think if I recall, they approved it, capital approved it, right? Yes. We approved this because we approved this for, um, uh, not FY next 25. Yeah. Well, because we, you know, by the time they award the grant, it will be fiscal year 25, but it would okay. be like July right. of 25. So we could actually do it this summer, which is really exciting. So the other piece that sort of piggybacked that was this question about the Stillwater Bridge rights of way and easement work we have to do in order to be prepared to ask town meeting to allow us to do takings. And that's what brought me to a change in contracted services because Carolyn brought up a really good point. We need to have money in the bank to be able to do the legal work, do the um, appraisals and surveys and be ready so that we know what the land is and what the cost is. And so the little bit of prep work would be, we estimated about $10,000. So in your contracted services, you see that change. I'm not asking you to approve it right this what, second. What, what, uh, what number is that? 159 159 I gave it to you earlier. Trevor. Okay, got it. Um so we had already cut a bunch of things out of that budget. Like I cut training and, and professional development completely out. My biggest concern is like we're more than a hundred thousand in the hole. I don't know how we can tackle another MVP project, like unless you said we have all the money already, we I've, do have the money, Trevor. Everything, engineering, like, like but no all issue of it. is is what don't we have that MVP two point oh money allocated towards other projects? No, the two point no, we the two point oh is you you can pick a project. Okay, because the, I thought it was allocated yeah. to other projects. No, 
the 2.0 is you you can f decide what you want to do for a project and we would be voting to do and how much money do you have to do that i don't know we got what was i it? don't know that's it's 80, Chris usually handles that. is eighty thousand going to cover that over well that's I what i mean i just don't want to tackle work. another project when we're already a hundred thousand in full that's why you have to have a little engineering you know, well, I we know, but have, to have somebody. We're going to have Nick give us a sizing, and then we just need a little bit of money for the engineering. But we don't have any. Is what the, my only concern is? We don't have any money, and I'm trying to figure out how to approve another project without having any money. If we could, if you want to pull it from ARPA, or if you want to pull it from somewhere else, but you can't really pull it out of the omnibus budget because we're already a hundred thousand shy. So how do you, I mean, if you, if we find another source of money, not this omnibus budget, because who, what else are we, so we add that project, what else are we cutting? I agree. We need to fix this. This whole process is, is, is wrong. I mean, we need to, we need to fund this town correctly. And we haven't, we, every year we keep cutting and cutting and cutting, and we still have all these projects that need to happen. That's it stops up all the water for all of it North does. Main Street. It's a disaster, it, and we need to we need to do everything you said, and we don't have the money. So how and we have money in cap stabilization, or we have money in, you know, our we have other bits of money, but I don't know how you pull it out of the omnibus budget because we just we still need another hundred thousand dollars. What we're doing is getting we're getting uh, additional research funding for the Stillwater. Okay, and the reason, let me just tell you. I agree reason, with that. That needs to happen. Well, the the reason why I'm worried, that's a $23 million project yeah, that, that I have to be been funded before this shended, sh uh, have been shepherding for years. years. Okay. 20 years. So, yeah, well, no, not 20 years, 15 maybe. 15. But that's $23 million that the town doesn't have to pay. Right. Our obligation is to, check, is to make sure the right of ways are available. Agree and my and my concern is DCR owns the property immediately uh, abutting the the south end of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, that property is under a re conservation restriction. Yeah, and from my understanding, and is you can only move remove a conservation restriction um, through legislative process okay so that's why i am yeah, like we need to have some additional research funding mm -hmm. to make sure that that process gets started yeah the other complication is um on the uh on the west side both north and south is um you know international uh hydro companies uh, it was trans canada mm -hmm. then you then they Great uh, River bought them out, Hydro brought, bought them out, and now it's Quebec Hydro bought out Great River. Did those properties transfer? Who knows? Mm -hmm. But you got to do the research, and then it's an international right. transaction of some sort. So I know that that's going to be hugely delayed. So we've got to, whether you want to or not, Trevor, we've got to add some money to this contracted services so we can start immediately on this research. Right. But this culvert back here is way less important than Stillwater Road. Well, and I'm, I'm saying like, it, Trevor, some, you Trevor, still, where's the other hundred thousand we're cutting is my concern. Like what, what else are Trevor, we cutting? Trevor, we will figure out this out if we have to do ARPA. I will be saying ARPA. This, this, you are saying it's way more important. It's not as important. It's not. It is. This is way more important if you are a homeowner fine. down here in the South Village. It's not more important than Stillwater Road. Bridge. So let's let's. I just want to understand we're we're having like two different conversations. Yeah. All right. So one is we're worried about ten thousand um, dollars. So we we just got back fifty seven hundred dollars, and now we're talking about. But we're still in the we're, hole. We're talking 100. about forty three. We're still in the hole. One hundred thousand. Right. We're still in the hole for one hundred thousand dollars, and we're going to work through that through the finance committee. Yes, we'll work um, with the finance committee. You know, cut this that. number changes frequently. 
first it was 300,000. Now it's a hundred thousand. I, well, I'm, I'm not included in a lot of these conversations. So I come in and I, and I don't know where we are. I don't either. We have but to I, have a, a, a conversation so that all three of us are on the same have page. a gap, but we always cover our gap because we figure out we're less priority areas that we cut. Okay. I'm saying that it's important if you are a homeowner down here, it's important that we address that culvert. We have an opportunity to cover that culvert other than we need to have an estimate of How much cost. It's gonna cost, right? Right. So we and can't say we can cover it yet. Well, so let me understand the program we're talking about. There's there's additional money from the state to do culverts. That that money is available to MVP 2.0 communities. Towns. It what it says is towns um, th that need to complete the 2.0 process will be notified in the fall. You don't need to worry. You are an eligible community already for this. So even though we are not completely through our MVP 2.0 point out process, we will still be eligible for this new money. But right. what I'm asking is internally is the question. The, what do we need to do in terms of engineering to be ready to apply for this? I mean, and we're talking about using the $25,000 for our MVP2 um, project to fund part of this. In other words, I need to hear the whole picture. Okay. Right? What, what I thought it was clear. I'm sorry. What we need, we have money on the 2.0 process that right. is not that would dedicated. be a match. It would, would be, be we would could use the match towards that. Right. And we don't know how much that is going to cost, but the project is eligible for up to three million. We will not use three million. Example is the open bottom culvert over at um, Kelleher Drive, even though we had an awful contractor, it still was like six or 700,000, wasn't it, Casey? It was five something. Um, no, it was- uh, it was something, wasn't it? No, no it was no. over three. It was, it was more. I wanna say it was around 350, but, but don't quote me. Whatever it is, we can put in an adequately sized open bottom culvert, even given price increases for under three million. I don't know what the match is going to be. We don't know, you know, we don't have any engineering on There's that. There's no way we could approach three million dollars no, for that no, culvert. No, no. But what was has been available in the past is like fifty thousand or seventy five thousand, and then we have to make up the difference. We're we're still in the several hundred thousand dollar range over there, but we don't know what range of how many hundreds. So this is ideal for us. We have part of the match. We may have all of the match. I don't know mm -hmm. that, but we need additional a few dollars of engineering. And as the engineering, we ended up talking about Stillwater Bridge. Is that because this engineering line we, item is going to encompass? No, both? well, no, it, the no. engineering would be different. I We need to have seed research. money in a budget mm -hmm. that allows us to do the development process to get to a vote for town meeting. So there's notification you have to do. So you're talking about two different there, kinds there are two of different kinds there are of two different set subjects. Right. But of they let a me back consulting contracted services. But what it is is it comes under you're hiring a consultant, whether it's an engineering one for the Bloody Brook culvert or uh research for who you know how do we get started on transferring the um right away. Yep. So, but it would be under the same line. But what line is that? No, it isn't under the same line. The MVP grant line is different from consultants. Well, we weren't it, hiring, Casey, it's not going under the MVP consultant because that is a facilitator. We are hiring an engineer no, to give us a price. No, it's under consultants, not MVP. It's under consultants on the page. 17,000. Okay. I added 10,000 to it. It was seven. Right. We can take it back out. You guys have well, I just it's uh, the only thing I'm saying is is if if we want to get to the I understand that the bloody brook is critical. I get that. Um if we need seed money for it, the way I remember it in the capital meeting, um, we didn't have to come up with the match, but you don't. You don't at this point. What we're talking about is just getting it. Uh, so the $25,000 for 
let's just separate these two. The $25,000 for Bloody Brook is to start the engineering process. No. We What's don't, it for? And we don't need 25000 That's what's in the schedule, Carolyn. For Bloody Brook, it says $25,000 because I wrote the schedule. That's that's for the full engineering design. We would just need a couple thousand dollars to begin with to get an idea of what the cost is to go. So to when do you want to do that? Because I would rather do it now. That way we don't have to change anything. Is that the the twenty five thousand is a full engineer design if we get the grant. And what we have in our two point oh is enough to cover the this twenty five thousand for sure. I don't know what the match is if you are talking, you know, is it truly a five hundred and fifty thousand dollar project? We don't know. I mean, Christopher just put down that number. We would have we have to get some engineering first before so we let me, know. Talk to, let me talk to Brenda about that. All right. Let's switch to the stillwater right of way. Okay. Stillwater right of way. That's a $23 million bridge project the town doesn't have to pay for. However, we do have to pay for the prep work, the legal work, and the appraisals for the pieces of property. Right. We do not have approved plans, so right. we can't do it right now. Right. Once the plans are approved, we could start that process. Right. The reason you see a change in that consultant line is to give us a little bit of cushion to start that. Because I don't know what the appraisers, appraisals are going to look like or the surveys. I don't yeah. know what that's going to cost. It also, and Carolyn made a really good point at the meeting, it's months out to get, um, maybe it was Mark, one of you did. I did because it's we had months we out to get these things set up. I so, agree. but we can't start until we have plans. So and, I thought and these about are plans from, from DOT. Right. And right. They DOT don't, does not have a they plans yet. Do they have uh, ninety percent plans or seventy percent plans? Or they have plans that are being reviewed. Mm -hmm. Once those plans are approved, then we have a start point. And I talked to DOT about this. The gentleman from DOT about this. Um, when that they... was the whole reason of me asking what? you to pull that article <laughs> off. The we, warrant. We can't go. I wanted to pull the articles off town meeting because. The we don't have enough information to talk about, you know, taking can, people can and, right. Mm -hmm. But there is a, a a lot a lot of research that has to happen beforehand, and what right. this does is allow us to go and start that process, because what will happen is DOT will come to us in the fall. Right. And they'll say, here's your 90% plans. You, We're not moving forward, and you're going to lose this project and lose your spot yeah, no. if you do not you have, have the to, right of way. have to fund that. Right. That's okay. a given. But what that means is we need a little bit of funding in. To start this process so we can get ready services. to jump in. And by having the money here in the consultant line, Casey can call up the surveyor right. and say a hundred percent for that. Can, can we, you know, we're, we want to get in line because yep. it's like six months out to so, get surveyors. So the thing that I had eliminated in the previous version of that budget was I eliminated all the training and professional development. Um, if we had to, we could eliminate the MVP grant writer and see if we, there are some special funds we might be able to use to handle that. Mm -hmm. It's, Nobody's asked me to come in and cut my budgets. I've already started to do that, like you saw the treasurer. Um, I've seen other departments start to do that because we know we're in dire is that, straits. Well, that's what I do with but the more to help budget. It, it, this yeah. is this is really having enough money to start the projects. You have to make sense. I, I get it. So I know you're upset about it. No, I was upset I'm about a, it. I'm just like prioritize like that. Yeah. I it's think so that, I think Stillwater is more it is really a critical thing. It but if is. it goes out on funding that could actually help us get other things, uh, the opportunity and, for funding, then we have to balance what I'm, we need. And I'm open to like other sources of funding, but I'm just saying we're we're gonna have such a trouble trying to figure out how to close this omnibus budget that I didn't want to put more into this. Trevor, we, we can put it, we can else. remove it. But the idea we, is we've got to start. This is an opportunity to take care of, of a choke point. Mm -hmm. And if we have a storm in the spring 
And it floods down here. I get all that. This is it's Just personal damage. Just from somewhere other than this line. That's the only thing I'm saying. Well, well. All right. Why don't I take that back and see if I can get some more answers from DOT? I don't know where they are. In the no, review Casey. Process. No, not don't DOT. bother DOT. No. Every time you talk to them, it gives them. The it does give me it's, it's not. I'm not it, talking about DOT. I'm talking about this spot here. This has nothing to do with DOT. I'm all set with the bridge. I'm good to go. 17,000 is great. That'll seed us the money to do the engineering, the surveying, all that stuff, correct? It's yeah. this culvert that I'm nervous it about. It will seed us what I think will, it might be more than that. I don't know, but it's a number. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing we could do is get that process started in this fiscal year and have contracts signed. And if we use money we have now the issue is is i don't know where we are in the process dot has to notify me when the plans are approved so, they are not, aware of the all two of us you you're mixing the two up yeah. we don't care about dot we're all done with that we're voting that as a positive okay 17 the only thing that we're talking about is this is bloody brook culvert and I am not an engineer enough to say that that's going to cost two or three hundred thousand. I forever. agree. We've got to have someone look at it. I understand. And so it's not going to cost a lot of money because we're not asking for complete engineering. Okay. That's where the 25,000 came from is complete mm -hmm. engineering plans that we would apply. But that also could be covered by our 2.0 money. We got like eight. But the project has to be approved by capital. Yes. And you have to see it since it falls within and we the auspices it, of and what we was asked to this, do. We, have, we had to have some numbers. Just like the road damage numbers, we had to have some numbers. So these numbers Christopher just put here, and we can, you know, we don't have to go further on it, but we do have an opportunity here mm -hmm. to take care of this. And if we can cover this under the two different MVP pods, because this is our vulnerable population area, you can use, we can be, that can be our seed project. Mm -hmm. Then why wouldn't we do it? Just they all, uh, my only concern is trying to find a way to get to town meeting with a budget we can pass. Well, we can eliminate I, I'm it. I'm sure we'll be, manage to do that. Okay. Yes. You know, I, it's harder and harder every year I'm sitting in this chair. Oh no, I, I'm 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 absolutely with you on that, um, Trevor. I know, I know every year. So and, and it's very clear that the state isn't supporting us adequately. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing you can do. You got to hustle the money. So, um, what are we actually asking ourselves to do right now? We're just passing contracted services that would be extra. What ten thousand you put in? Yep. I don't okay. know if it's the right number. I'm taking a stab at. Right. It's it's no different than any of the other things. Finance just, committee could ask right. you to eliminate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a couple of opportunities to get four times that money somewhere. I hope so. Um, yeah, I I'm yeah. I, I have some ideas. It okay. does require me to get some more information before I can bring it back to the board. Okay. So are we ready to? Yep. Did we have a motion to this or did so we make a motion to approve contracted services 1595410 at $287,334. $278,334. Yep. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right. Trevor, I totally get it. It's just. We we things haven't settled out yet. Just getting this nervous is a, about taking on more and more projects without settling them out. We have so many things going on right now. I know, but it's just overwhelming, and uh, people are running ragged, and there's not enough money, and it's just just because it's free money, it's not always free. It's it's not. There's an all right. That's cost. one reason why you know I was perfectly willing to give up the heat grant if it made no sense. For us to do it but it gives yeah it's free so that's right, right? it's so. free but you are assigning a task or a series of tasks you're you're, to, you're, you're taking to to, right staff. yeah it's, it's staff it's, it's a staff, staff task and so i there did is a, it there is a net impact yeah i did ask i said christopher this is really since you're probably i don't know the, how much planning it since you're you're, you're you're probably the person's going to take this on if you don't feel that it's worth your time right we shouldn't do it okay and, it 
you know, it, it pairs that it's worth his time. Okay. I'm I, good with that. Yeah. If it, uh, that. I trust the staff that they yeah. feel like, you know, they can make it happen. Yeah, it would be happen. nice if, um, you know, culvert is not a complicated thing. Right. It isn't. I it mean, isn't. All the culverts we put in I know. in the space of six months yeah. and the ridiculous sum of money that gets charged to get a precast right. piece of cement put in to let a river go through it. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's absurd. It's I mean, absurd. Buy the cement, hire Mike Morosky. Three days later, it's done. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't work that way. I know. Um, no, unfortunately. Or hire our DPW to do it. Maybe they don't have the equipment. Mm. Well, whatever. Um, okay, moving on. Next one. Um, uh, agenda item is the approval of additional House floor amendment to H4291, an act authorizing the town of Deerfield to continue the employment of police department members Michael um, Helbel and uh, Robert Thrasher and Mark Jackis. Do, is that, is uh, that every year? We, we've done we, this every year, right? Yeah, we have to do this every year, I think. Right, Casey? This is a change to the language. They, the legislature asked for a change. So you guys have to approve it. Okay. When this goes through town meeting, we always ask them to make sure you can do that. Right. So what you have to do is just vote to approve their change. Yeah, I'm good with that. And we don't really have a have control over what the legislature wants for change. Right. I'm good with that. Okay. So um, what we have to do is you have to do it. Um, approve motion. I'll make a motion to. Um, Approve the additional House floor amendment H two H four two nine one. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Tim Elchi, aye. Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, sewer abatement. Sewer abatement. Um, I, I talked to Kevin about this. This house wasn't hooked up yet. When he's still building it, I, I think it makes sense. I mean, it's a he hasn't had any usage because he wasn't hooked up and he started building. Uh, he'll be hooked up. I think he's probably hooked up now and the house is uh, moving along. But at the time that we did the readings, he wasn't in use of the building. He wasn't hooked up. So I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't abate this one. Okay. He'll be he'll be on, you know, on the he'll be in the next billing cycle. He just wasn't the house wasn't done yet. He wasn't using it. The, the billing the cycle was from May to October, right? I believe so. Right. Yeah, so he's not asking for the for the November to right whatever. Correct, whatever. correct. Are That's you still the entire thing. Yes, because he wasn't hooked up and uh, there was no usage. So if he wasn't hooked up, I think it makes sense to. I mean, if he was hooked up, then you've got the hookup fee. But he wasn't. From what I, I understand, he, I talked to Kevin. He said he yeah. wasn't hooked up yet. So, so the question I had, and, and you raised it earlier, was mm -hmm. um, if you own a piece of property. Yep, and it's within the the area where you have to be hooked up to. Yep, and there's a base fee. Yep, does even owning the owning the acreage mean that you have to pay that? Fee? No, no. Uh, I was thinking about that, and what I was thinking is a uh, betterments. So if you were charging a betterment, and the, and we were doing some sewer infrastructure or something, and it went by the house. The property owner would be charged a betterment fee for for whatever upgrades we were doing, but um, just because the pipe goes through the house, if you don't have anything, you don't have a hookup charge. So it's only once you um, like because you wouldn't know how many houses are going on or any of that kind of thing or how many pieces of property could be put on that okay. that piece of land. So, so it's only for betterment betterments, but not. Um, but he pays to hook up. Yes, once yes, once he hooks in, he pays a hookup charge, and he yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that so I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, sewer abatement for David Hayes, fifty three Eastern Avenue. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor Carol McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. We did this already, right? Yeah. Um. So the next item on the agenda is um, permits. <laughs> One day liquor license permit for Progression uh, Brewing Company for July 27th, 2024. It's a private wedding at Woman Hill. Right. It's from um, 445 to 945. 
I don't see any issues. They paid their permit and all, and yep. I don't see the. It looks here, like but... they're all their permit stuff is in order here. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have liquor liability, um, workers' comp. Yep, I'm good. Okay. So I'm just trying to. So I'll have to take a motion. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve um, the one day liquor license for Progression Brewing Company for 7 27 2024. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill G. I. Trevor, Trevor McDaniel. S. I. Trevor McDaniel. I. Sorry, and is there another one? Uh, no, or is this Think Tank Brewery part of Progression Brewing Company? Hold on. I only have. Uh, oh, I see. Think Tank Brewery's DBA Progression Brewing. Right. Okay. Same right. same company. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Okay. Um, next item is um, adoption of re uh, letters of support for the adoption of the revised energy reduction plan to incorporate Frontier Regional School into the baseline for green communities program. I have a question about that. Uh, so what is this doing again? It's essentially adding Frontier to Deerfield's energy reduction program. They were not contemplated years ago when the plan was developed. So, so does this, does this um, force Frontier to do, District to do something that they don't want to or? No, I think it allows them the ability to utilize green communities funds through Deerfield. But it doesn't force the them to um, no. do anything I don't that they would so. have to do it, otherwise. It's not like that uh, other thing that the energy department uh, right the commission is supporting about uh, super right steroids yeah yeah yep okay i just wanted to make sure that we weren't saddling frontier with something that you know we didn't have a right to do there has been communication between frontier and energy resources and they're open to this um the plans available they couldn't have done the plan without working with energy resources so okay there was a lot of work that the committee went in yeah, they've actually been communicating with Darius pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's All been because right. this information came through Alice Engage, and she gave us the information to develop the letter and stuff. So it's a two part thing. You would you support them being adopted into the plan because the state has to physically decide to do that. But we had to give them a revised plan in order okay. for them to be able gotcha. to. Gotcha. I see. I understand. Um, okay. So I I don't have the letter to sign, Casey. Here. Well, there. I think I think there was already a signature. Yeah, yeah. we've signed that. They you signed, signed as already. we had to do that last yeah. week. So this is oh, a retroactive okay. vote. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, Got okay. It. The date on the letter. I was going to so say... make a motion that we uh, approve the letter of support for um, inclusion of. Uh, yep. The. Um, Frontier Regional School uh, in the Green Communities Program. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering. I, yeah. I couldn't yeah, no, I, we already I, did that. All right. We just wanted you guys to essentially ratify it. Okay. Um, no, that's fine. Um, next item on the agenda. Um, is, is there any Larry Lot updates? We don't. We don't have. I the think contract if there's, I, I, you know, I didn't ask Chris before he left. He gave you his report. Okay. Um, I do know that we went to the C CFI meeting, so they had a kickoff meeting. I want to say it was last. Was it Monday? I think it was Monday. I went to part of it. I had to run away because I had an appointment, but he he was going to give some updates in his report on some of that information. Okay. As so long as we're progressing, we're trying to get to the contract phase. Let's put it that oh. way. <laughs> like, like Tim alluded to earlier in the meeting. Okay. That's the choke point. That's yeah. the choke point. Thank you, Tim. Um, all right. Next item on the agenda is Maxley. Um, the wastewater um, operator is resigning. So we accept his letter of resignation. Yeah. I'll make a motion to thank him for his service. Yeah. And I'm glad that he's moving on in the industry. And uh, was trained well and moving on to another better department. Um, so I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Max Lay as a wastewater operator for the town of Deerfield. And I'll second that. And I would also like to say that um, I want to thank Eric Meals for um, mm. 
taking doing, these youngsters on and, and training them doing appropriately. Right and, um, and I apparently already have somebody to come in under, as a trainee. So, um, yeah, he's hoping to, hoping to hire. He's looking at a couple of interviews. He's having some interviews tomorrow. He's hoping to hire. Yeah. Um, they, I, I, you have a question. No, I was just going to say, Eric has been do doing such a good job training people. It, I mean, it's like John Pachorik, you train our police officers up and everybody moves on. So it's really tough because. Did you see your hand? Was that? Yeah. No, you don't have a question? I don't have a question. I wanted to give a shout out to Eric and to Chris. No, oh, go because ahead. Because as soon as we found out about this, Eric and I talked and Chris put the. Um, notice the vacancy notice up for the operator in training right later that day and we received an application which is how we're in a situation where we can do interviews i mean we yeah. have a recommendation that's great for you guys to take up tomorrow as early right. as tomorrow yeah the it would be an item and anticipate it but we have to fill a spot sure, sure. and it's that's a critical need it is yeah and we have to be staffed at a certain level to comply with our um permit yep for sure. MPDES permitting. So, you know, I give I give Eric so such a huge amount of credit for knowing people that are willing to are interested. But yeah. also, you know, Chris deserves a lot of credit for getting the vacancy up. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. No, well, thank I, you both. That's a great point. Yeah. Thank you. So um all right. All right. Moving on. Next um item on the agenda is um our special event regulations and employment employee reimbursement. I, I'm i just, I had told Allison earlier that mm -hmm. we were going to table this because okay. we've just been so busy with stuff, um, budgets and everything else that, I mean, I haven't really had a chance to look at this in depth. And um, so we're going to put it off till next meeting at least. Okay. If that's okay with you guys. Yep. And which one are we talking about? Special events okay, is the number one. Okay. And then the second one is the town of Deerfield employee reimbursement policy. We haven't really looked at that and discussed it. So I would I would say that if you table all three of this, we do have to make some changes. The reason you see the special municipal employee designation there is we've got some incorrect names for committees on there. And there's a few committees that are relatively recently created that are not on there. So we need to make a change to that. But like you said, we're in the middle of dealing with budgets and the annual town meeting warrant. And those are our critical things that have to get done in the next several weeks. So, you know, I think we could probably put that off for a little, put those off for a little while. Okay. Um, and the next item on the, uh, if that's okay, is that okay with you guys? Yeah, it's fine with okay. me. Um, next item on the agenda is the geothermal bylaw. I, you know, I don't know how you all feel about that, but I have a bylaw. Yeah, we haven't we haven't really you discussed. Asked me it. to put it on a while ago, and I don't have an update on it. Did do we you, need a bylaw? Do you have an update? Did, did I? Did I? Yeah. <laughs> do we did. need a bylaw? Well, we should. We should. Oh, because I don't think we're prepared to do a bylaw. We're not prepared to do anything. Yeah, I can't. I, I was going to table it. I was. Do you want me to? Do you time. want me to take it off? <laughs> no, I, I I think probably you know the planning department you know and maybe Christopher Dunn should think about this. But uh, okay, yeah, there were there are reasons for having a geothermal yeah. bylaw. But I mean, if we have a bylaw and we're applying for federal money and uh, uh, maybe it's good for us. Maybe it, it also gives some guidance to residents who want to. Do geothermal right. and uh, there are supportive health concerns and stuff like that too. So it's important to have one, but no, we just haven't had time to look at it. So, um, <laughs> next item on the agenda is the placeholder for uh, updates on campus buildings and funding. Tim, do you want to just um, talk about the wonderful job over at the church? Um, well, I mean, we are we're closing in on having. Uh, the church kitchen area uh, operationals. Um, I have to um, thank Casey for expediting, um, you know, purchase of goods and appliances and um, other items related to that project. Um, the library has been in today, um, putting tape on the floor for where they're going to locate their um, 
where they're going to locate their tables and um, children's department and adult department and computers. Um, and Kevin Scarborough is um, organizing the final adjustments to electrical outlets and uh, Wi-Fi service. Um, and the library has selected their moving date, April 15 and 16. So Sitterly Movers was over there this afternoon as well, looking into, um, you know, a plan for moving from the library next door to that space. Yeah. Um, the uh, kitchen floor is done um, and just in time for the appliances to arrive from Manny's. So um, this guy over here did it. Yeah. Well, so you, you did. I walked in today. I was amazed. Not because I didn't think you could do it. It's just so much work. No, oh, well, yeah. I mean, it, sometimes, you know, that's my contribution. I, I saw the $4,200 to install the floor, and I just said, ah, right there. Ah. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't spend that money. So anyway, great. it was fun. It's great. And, uh, you know, I, I will... Uh, was it chop saw or is it like a yeah, well, knife chopper? No, I use the chop saw. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. compound miter just because. Right. Yeah. You want to um, get a nice cut. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. So, and, um, you know, then, then we're just waiting on the cabinets and countertops and yeah. then we'll, we'll be good to go. Great. That's it's great. really exciting. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Everybody who walks into the, to the library space, uh, and sees the bathrooms and everything. Yeah. And so, wow, this is amazing. It's great. Yeah. 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 It's really, it is amazing. It's so exciting. Um, okay. The only other thing that I want to put on our radar, and I know, Trevor, you're stressed out about having another meeting, but I think we need to have a meeting or two on how we're going to reorganize. Notice how that went from another meeting to a meeting or two. Right. Well, because I, I don't think it's going to be a straightforward discussion on um, DPW reorganization. We have to take advantage of the fact that Kevin is going to retire. He's still here. We need to talk about how other towns are structured and how we want to move forward in the future, given what we've seen with the, uh, you know, kind of the work that came out of all the storm damage and mm -hmm. how we handled it and um, just in general, how do we want to move forward? Uh, we There are a couple towns that have already reorganized in different ways that we have examples of. Um, I can reach out to the MMA and try to get some more examples for us mm -hmm. to read. Um, the idea is to um, look at what we think we're going to, where are we going in the next 10 or 15 years, 20 mm -hmm. years? What do we see? What, do we, what are the demands on the department? And how are we going to meet with them with our resources? Given the fact that we, of course, don't have as many resources moving forward as we would want. So how do we manage it? And, you know, I think it's it's worth a meeting or two to talk with Kevin and his observations and and what he thinks. And then we look at what other communities are doing for the future that they paid people to do. Um, I find that I am always hesitant to go out and hire a consultant because a consultant doesn't know us, doesn't know our community. I think we can do our own research. I think we can figure out what we want. And if we want someone to help us move forward, okay. But we need to do some initial work um, and I feel like we can, we're to totally capable. Um, yep. and, and it's a discussion I'd like to start pretty soon, obviously not next week, Trevor, nope. <laughs> but, um, I would, I just want to put it on the radar. Meeting, so, right? so that Casey can schedule it sometime in the next few weeks. Okay. Yep. All right. Casey, you have your report. I actually need you guys to go back to the annual town meeting warrant because you need to open it and officially yeah. make okay. some changes. So I will go article for article. So I was almost at the end. I'll make a motion to reopen the town warrant. Any will second that motion. All those in favor? No, G I. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessai, okay. Okay, I'll take it away. So you're gonna see some changes and comments from council in what I printed for you. I accepted 
some of her, you know, uh, font changes and stuff, but she has notes in the comment sections. Some of my comments are not removed, but I want, I'll go, I'll go with the first article. So article one, um, you're going to see that the gift table is in there, but I took it out for this version because I need to revise it. Okay. Um, article two, there are, Right now, we still need to fill in the blanks, but that's not going to happen until we review, continue review of the budget. Article three hasn't changed. Article four reflects the, reflects it's the personnel bylaw mm -hmm. article change. It reflects the discussion points in the composition section regarding the number of Members, members, right. both ex officio and voting, mm -hmm. and then the quorum necessary for action to be taken. So those changes were input by council. Um, okay. Article five is the classification compensation plan. And remember, council said if article four is approved, right, the we board can pass this over. Yeah. Um, article six is the snow and ice shor shortfall. Mm -hmm. There's no change in that. And I talked to Brenda this morning, this afternoon at lunch and she and I want to hold that steady. We don't know what the funding source is going to be. So just leave Do it. Do we know what the dollar amount is at the moment? No. We don't have a dollar okay. amount at this point. We may I, not have a dollar amount until we finish up motions. Yeah. I mean I, I thought winter. um I thought we weren't too much we aren't we're like a hundred and ten or something. We aren't it's not horrible right now, but yeah. we're not it's, it's, like, it's not it's the like end of 20. April either. I know. I mean, so, it's like twenty or twenty-five thousand. Yeah, Trevor. Providing we don't get. We can always put the number in the motion. Yeah. So okay. I um, move that we let the snow melt if we have another storm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> see, nobody drive. <laughs> so article, let's see, article seven. This is prior year bills. Lisa had left a comment for me that if we had the funding sources, that we should put those in. So I rewrote okay. the article to include those funding sources. Yeah. Um. And earnings and the article cash. eight okay. is transferring the FY23 opioid funds into the special revenue fund. Yeah, there was no change in that. Um, article nine is the omnibus budget, mm -hmm. article 10 is the sewer enterprise fund, and the tables yeah. have been included, so that's a final one. Yeah, so that's the article nine is when Don Dan Graves goes through line by yes. line and everybody yes gets exactly yes yep yes um so article 11 we don't have a complete budget from scam so you won't see a table and if i have it before we can publish that will be great if i don't we, we um don't we have a it. casey we have a meeting next um wednesday so we're hoping to finalize the budget i know and i've already seen some questions back and forth from jeff between jeff and josh so um but I'm just going over this, the warrant mechanics. Um, so what follows that SCEMS funding article is the SCEM capital improvements for FY24, yep. which was requested by the board last week. Yeah. So it's good. placed there. The our, the language is there. I may just have to put in a sum. I, I think we'll have that settled, but right now there's a blank yep. for the funding. Okay. Um, FY25 capital improvements follows that. And there are capital... Capital has substantially completed review. They plan to discuss this with finance and the select board next week. And Julie's made some adjustments in the start times and, and sort of the framework of the meeting next Monday. It would probably be a good idea for you to at least watch it if you can't um, try to be there. attend. Um, um, which one are we on now? Article 13. 13. 13. 13. Thank you. So that was capital improvement, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, article 14, this is community preservation. What I do have, I have the beginnings of a table when we have an approved project or approved projects. Right now, all I did was put in the reserve fund balances because even if we don't have a project table or any other information for CPC, they always want to see the reserve fund balances. So we started putting those in yeah. and publishing them in the warrant. Okay. Um, and I have to give Brenda a lot of credit. She worked on this on Friday and over the weekend just so we would be pre more prepared. Okay. Um, article 15 is the quarterly tax payment yep. request. There has been no change to that. Yep. But I have received some bullet points and discussion right. points 
from Sarah. Mm -hmm. So we can include those. My question for you is, do you want to include any notations in the warrant or just wait till the guide? I think in the guide. In the guide. Okay. It just, yeah. right. why, why complicate yeah. the warrant? Yep. That's fine. There's, there's only a couple places in the warrant where you see a notation. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd ask. Yep. All right. Article 16. This is the petition for the trustees yep. to request changes to the Tilton Trust. And it does encompass the language that Lisa had provided me before our discussion on the 13th. So I think that one's all set. Yeah. Um, Article 17 is the CPC bylaw changes. And that language was set. You guys discussed that with Lisa yeah. last week. I have had no change to that. Um, Article 18 is the request for permission to dispose of the land with the red barn on it. It's that last piece of land yep. near the old, where the old highway garage was. Right. Um, we're requesting to dispose of it. Mm -hmm. So what I had, I had asked a couple of questions from Lisa and she fixed the article. There's only one question. There's a, there's a notation in there that I want to check with her. Um, about. Maybe in the, oh. do we, do we have a, an appraisal? Yeah, I was going to say in the guide, like what it's, what it's valued at. Do we know? I don't have an appraisal. Okay. I can, I reached out to see if I could get FSI to do an appraisal for it. Yeah. You want an appraisal before town meeting? Well, I don't think we'll get one. We don't, I don't yeah. think we well, may we'll not be able to get one. But, but it might be good to start. I mean, if we ever sell, we're going to need an appraisal, right? Right, yeah. but we can, We don't have to have that for town right. meeting. Right, no, that's fine. I mean, well, if, it, if somebody has- I had already great, reached if, out to FSI about that. And just in case I people I just hadn't pulled the trigger with them. That's yeah, I mean, if you want me to do it now, I can try. Yeah, I mean, you can start the process. Yeah, getting... if, yeah if you have time. All right, so let me do that. Um, I need to write myself a note. You probably won't be able to start before the town meeting anyway. Right. And and if that's the case and they vote this down, then we can just tell them, hey, right. don't, don't, don't appraise We'll come back in the fall. Yeah, yeah um, whatever. I don't yeah. see anyone wanting to hang on to it. But, but you, know. you did make a commitment or as part of your discussion to oh, try yeah. to dispose of the land, new pros interested in buying yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. And if they're going to clean it up and make it prettier, I honestly don't think the general public would be adverse to that. Right. Yeah. Right. And and then we just have to deal with where we're going to store the property that's in the barn. Exactly. And and that's a discussion between us and new pro. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one, I spoke to our assistant town administrator and he assures me that we can take what is now article 19 out and that was the article to appropriate funds from other sources to provide the match for the leary lot he reviewed the the rule the 2022 rule and the 2023 interim rule after i i made sure that i sent him that information from lisa when we reviewed this last wednesday he reviewed it and he's 90% sure that we're okay using our ARPA funds because we use the entire allotment. It was it was no, voted as revenue out. replacement. Right. So, That's what I was wondering. If you could. Yeah. So he reviewed that. Lisa had said she thought that was the case, but he, I had him review it the next day. Okay. Um. So I removed Article 19. Mm -hmm. What is currently Article 20 is the funding article to pay for the roads, yep. the road repairs. Um, and it it says vote, and this was the change that Lisa suggested, and that was to appropriate transfer or otherwise provide. Yep. You can settle your funding source in your motion. But, and that uh, was her recommendation last week. So I see the two thirds was crossed out, but if it comes from, if we say, I mean, it, it's got to be a two thirds vote if it comes out of general stabilization. Yes, if it did. And we would put that back. Okay. But we could also, put I see. You, you could outline that. that in the guide too. Okay. All right. Um, because sometimes those things get outlined in the guide. Okay. Um, we don't know how, we don't know how we can, I mean, if we're right. able to get it out or not. Yeah. Um, and then the rescind, right? And then you have the Once rescission Once we know it's vote. paid. Yeah. And you make it, if that's the direction you want to take, then that's what you take. So the reason I asked you to open the warrant officially is this voting rights for 16 and older citizens petition that we received 21 yeah it, it now it's article 21 it would turn into article 20 in the next oh, iteration okay. yeah so the required signatures were obtained wait a minute i mean article 19 and 20 
still be 21, wouldn't it? No, because we're re I'm eliminating Article 19. Yeah, but you already changed it. Article 18, you eliminated. Yeah, 19, 19 is the you made article 20, transfer article the money. 19, made... This is why I hate track changes. <laughs> I truly hate track changes. Yep. I know. No, you've already Either done way, it. You've done the it. Last article. Your work is done. <laughs> the last you article. Go home. <laughs> so basically, I need you guys to formally incorporate this into the warrant. The signature requirements have been satisfied. Mm -hmm. Council reviewed the language. Now, this is the language straight from their petition. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, they also, this is one of those places where they have a description. So uh, this is a description submitted by them. So I included it below the language of the warrant article to comply with everything that was sent to me and was certified by the town clerk. All right. So nice job. It, I recommendation from council was to include it. Um, I also had can I check can I, my check a couple other things. Can to I, make sure can I, I was just okay. ask a, st a stupid question? It says here that this article would authorize the select board to petition the general court for home rule legislation to allow any citizen of the town of Deerfield 16 or 17. I thought we set on 16. That's well, in the description, could, the language. It could be either age. It could. It could. So they 16. could be 17 or 16. You got, I think you need to label both ages, right? Yeah. You could say 16 and above, or you, or the way I they have it should, is age yeah. 16 but and 17. But this is 17. their article. Right. So we'll just leave this it. This is All their right. article. So okay. the description says 16 and 17-year-old. Yeah. And that's true, because if you read the article language, it's a 16 or older. Yeah. We know at 18, this is no longer an issue. So you're right. really talking about 16 and 17. Yeah, it just seems like it should be and. Well, I mean, the so article or... says 16 or older. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. The description, the description is sure. just sort of an explanation. Is the description right. even going to be in there? Well, I put it in just because it came in as part of the certificate. It was part of the language that was sent to be certified by the town clerk. I could certainly ask if we need to put that in there, but I think that's how they submitted it. Okay. So I just reflected how they submitted it. Yeah. Do you need a motion to close the warrant? Yes, please. Whoa. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, I, I, I hate to... races for the select board. Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> On the personnel board um, part, I reading through this, I just want to be absolutely sure that this addresses the overtime issues for holiday pay so we aren't there yet. What this does, this changes the bylaw, takes the benefits out of it, and slightly changes the composition. So the, the personnel board the then personnel has... manual would address That's it. other okay. those. That's and all what I you do is sure. we, we'll take the benefits out and we'll develop the manual. I was working on that over the weekend. I, okay. I, I have a question about one word in Article 19, and um, maybe maybe we did. Um I wondered if instead of saying extraordinary road and sidewalk reconstruction, that sidewalk, I don't know, did we replace any sidewalks? Um, so maybe infrastructure? I don't know. This was the exact language that we put before town meeting last October. It was also the exact language in the, the special election question. Okay, that's that's, the, that's reason. A good reason. That's reason. That was the only reason I used that yeah. because I know what we did. Right. But this was the language that was voted, so I thought it prudent to use the same language. And, yeah. Uh, what happens if we don't get a two thirds majority uh, to rescind? Oh, oh God! You know, I don't know then about we just that. Hang I on to the money. I, so I don't remember if you need a two thirds majority to rescind yeah, borrowing. No, probably not. I don't think we do, but it's in there, I and can't. I forgot to ask. We won't cannot, get a majority. I cannot imagine anybody would give us. A oh yeah, they're gonna vote that. Oh, I Come on. they're gonna vote that. Um, and then is, is the last part of this. So German... Kathy had given me a correction and the correction was we have a seat. Um, it's a one Deerfield school committee member for a two year term is open. Yeah, that's currently um, what Trevor. Trevor is is working through. He's serving on that until the election. Mm -hmm. But it's on the warrant, the election warrant to be filled. Yeah. But I don't think anyone's pulled papers for it. I was told by Cassie nobody pulled papers for it. So it may be a situation where we're back to square one oh, where you, you have writing. to appoint somebody again. Oh. Does somebody do a writing? Am I I thought it was somebody appointed until somebody takes it. 
Yeah. Somebody could do a write-in. Yeah. No, um, like... And if somebody d does do a write-in, there's a process for that where okay. if we get a write-in, the town clerk contacts the person to see if they're interested in serving. If yeah. they're not, then the position's open and I we would write go through the same in. project process. We could write somebody in. I don't know. I mean, I felt I felt bad because it's 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 difficult for the school committee to get what, their work done. What's it is this MDAR animal? Um, we have to appoint a uh, animal inspector every year. You um, don't appoint no, it. that's I not appoint ours. It. That's yeah. MDARS. That's MDARS. I have yeah, not that. ours. You just got to be in here to, to let us. Yeah, it's, it's, the, well, I don't know. Maybe Chris didn't want to count understand cows. it. I just haven't filled it out yet. No, I, I thought it was. Want to I thought I want to be the fence guy. You want to keep you can well, because no. Skip is not doing it any longer. I mean, no, he doesn't live in town. Right. See, so we need a new fence. You, mean, you want to be the fence Skip, guy? Skip owns that. No, yeah. He was the fence Walk, viewer. Walking the fences. Yeah. yeah. You basically, it's it's. Well, who's going to take care of my tick? You know. Ticks. <laughs> well, so Casey, you're going to fill us out. For yeah, I usually oh. fill it out. My question was, and I actually had taken it down to ask Dick, but he didn't answer me. I'd like to go count the animal. State. The animal inspector is Dick right now. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll do it. I'm sure year. he's willing to do it. I just, yeah, I felt the need to ask him. The problem is, you need somebody that's halfway capable, and it's it's actually a hard position to fill. Montague had a hard time filling that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of work involved there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I is. didn't know that until I went to Asheville. Yeah, I went yeah. to the training. And Are we done? Exactly. Um, I did have a couple of things I oh, wanted good. to tell you guys about. So I've been working with Chris and the rest of the public safety team on the Treehouse Brewing Company EAP. I've also been working on three HR items, two investigations and, a, and the bylaw change. I've got some information I'm going to send out to you, and it's the report from the Collins Center plus... A, a memo that sort of describes the intent of this because personnel is going to do a review on the 9th and then the hearing is on the 23rd of April. So I want you guys to know that and we'll start notifying everybody next week. It'll be on, we notify everybody in their paychecks. There's a sticker on their paychecks and we'll be posting this and publishing it in the newspaper, which is what's required under the current bylaw. Um, so just so you know, they'll be that hearing, they'll have two hearings actually. It's gonna be class comp and it's gonna be the bylaw change. And then I did find out that there's a bit of a hiccup with the police HVAC system. So it may be delayed a little bit. The um, engineer is working with the contractor so they can meet that deadline. But if there is an extension required, we'll probably have to put it through um, via the contract. Hasn't acceptance. affected the price yet, right? Hmm? Hasn't affected the price though. No, it's only affected. It's a no change change order. It's affected the timeline. Okay. Um, and I do need to let you know. I mentioned it earlier, but April third is. I don't know how this is going to fall out. Chris and I are going to have to talk about it because I have an all day training. He has an all day training next week, and I have an all day training um, on the third. And I don't know what your meeting is going to look like. Like I'm, I because now I don't meeting, think he can. A very do. light meeting. Yeah, it, maybe we'll just well, skip it. Except we for could, you could, have a hearing do that day. Oh, we do. So, well, okay. Would you, do you do like you, us to keep it light? Do you know? Yes. Um, do you know already if they didn't negotiate anything? I don't know. Can I you check? Know. Because if if they've negotiated something, then maybe we could switch our meeting night. Good. Um, we don't have to meet next Wednesday. Well, I mean, the Wednesday the third. If if you if, have if, to pick, if the hearing has to. Yeah, we got. Well, no, if we have to continue the hearing, right. yes. But what I'm saying is maybe, you they know, it looked like out. that they were going to work something out. Uh -huh. Maybe they bought those uh, noise canceling headsets for the dog. No, no. <laughs> That's what they should probably do. Then the dog won't know to bark at anything. <laughs> uh. Too many right. long meetings today. Yeah, it's been it's yeah punchy for sure. A motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Tim Hilchi, aye. aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Stop yes. recording.